Hello, welcome to Access, my name's Nathan and this is a guide about how to win every round of amazing last one standing multiplayer hit Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout. We're going to go through each round in turn, sometimes there's a lot to say, others it's just one or two golden rules. All our advice is focused on getting you through the rounds, surviving until the final so you can get your hands on the coveted crown. Let's start by looking at the race events and specifically Dizzy Heights, which is a nice easy one to begin with. First thing, don't fight the turntables, they will win. Always run in the direction they're going, even if it's the long way round, and time your jump off each one to give you momentum to propel you forward. Weave through this section to avoid the balls, just remember waiting is always quicker than getting knocked down, and then treat this second set of discs the same as the first. For the final set of discs, they'll pull you in different directions, but just try to stay as central as possible to give yourself the quickest route to the finish. Next, the Whirly Gig, a course of spinning obstacles. If you start at the front of the pack, then try jumping down this hill. You gain a little ground on your opponents. Watch out if you're in the pack though, because you'll probably fall over. Head directly across the middle of the circular platforms and hop the beams as they sweep around. Or if you're feeling brave, position yourself so that the beams will shove you in the right direction and let them hit you. The results can be unpredictable. From the conveyor belt hill, if you time it right, you can jump straight onto a yellow box, straight onto the next platform. If you mess up the timing, you can also jump by the platform and hold R2 to grab it and pull yourself up. From here on, you'll face windmill obstacles. The first one isn't so tricky. Dive forward with square if it helps. The next set are a little more intimidating because they overlap, but really, you only need to focus on one. Just pick a spot, note the timing, and you'll be fine. Then you have a choice. First you can go the quick way, there's another hill and a sail and the timing is much tougher but the route to the finish is much shorter. If you get knocked off you'll still get to try the long way on these disc platforms with a sweeping beam. Just take it easy and always take another jump over the beam instead of rushing a jump to the next platform. Do the same for the final jump, you might have to wait for these big sails to move and you'll be fine. Next, Seesaw, which can be a game of patience. Our main advice is take your time. Only attempt jumps you're sure you can make. It's better to stay and wait for a platform to tilt than to dive off. You'll also have more time than you think, even if it seems like you're way behind. Get a good run going and it's usually possible to catch up. When you take really steep jumps onto very tilted platforms, turn in the air so you land facing sideways, looking along the seesaw itself and dive using square. You have much more grip when landing from a dive and you've got a better chance of sticking to steep platforms. Keep an eye out for where opponents are going and be smart about which jump you aim for next. If everyone is running to the right, say, then the left of the platform is going to be rising higher. Think ahead. Tiptoe is next, the Golden Path Tile Guessing Game. The time to take a chance here is at the beginning when you can easily catch up if it goes wrong. People will shove each other to find the next tile. It can get messy and dangerous in the front pack, but you also don't want to be too far behind because sometimes only a few people qualify. If you fall, be aware that the golden path fades over time, but you can usually track the safe route by looking at where there are gaps in the floor. As soon as you see the path to the finish line, rush there as fast as you can, and don't forget you need to jump from the final tile to the finish, there's a gap. Like a lot of the mini games, Gate Crash is all about timing and patience. Look at the pattern of the doors opening and closing and aim for whichever one should be down when you arrive. As the course starts to narrow, be aware that the gates at either end are on a different, longer timing loop than the others. Think about avoiding them to make sure you don't get stuck. When you get to the tricky final slide, start your descent in the exact middle of two of the three doors. As you get closer to the bottom, you'll be able to see which is your best chance of a clear shot to the exit. Aim that way, jump and dive. Fruit Shoot is one of the less forgiving events. Walking up the escalator is slow and steady work and there's no other way to do it. 
so speed and ground covered are crucial. Try to land on your feet when you first hit the escalator, i.e. avoid other players and face forwards. Stick to one of the sides as you make your way up. The purple barriers can provide a bit of cover, and while sometimes the giant fruit is going to wipe you out and there's nothing you can do about it, dive sideways to avoid it when you can. It takes less time to recover from that than being smacked down there. Door dash is a little like gate crash, but here there's no way to know which doors are solid and which will give way. Being brave doesn't pay here. Hang back, scan for which door bursts open, and then follow the crowd. Occasionally you'll get caught in a surge. If you're close enough to the door, you can jump and just let yourself be carried through on the current of other players. Get as much distance in your final jump as you can. It's always worth pressing square to dive forward to make a bit more ground. Hit Parade is actually relatively simple, which makes it dangerous as you can be unexpectedly eliminated if you make a couple of mistakes. Try to stay on top at the start with the cushion beams, but don't panic if you fall, you don't lose too much time. Don't fight the revolving doors, go with the crowd and the path of least resistance. The sliding door at halfway opens in the middle and then at the sides. You can see which is likely to be open when you arrive as you reach the last couple of revolving doors. The last bit of danger are these swinging balls. If you move the camera to the side, you can see if they're gonna hit you, and there's actually a fair bit of room up there. It's worth taking your time here as getting back on the platform having been knocked off takes a while. Do this, and hopefully the slime hill at the end will be a formality. Finally, our favorite and perhaps the most difficult race event, Slime Climb. Slime climb is different to the others because if you fall off the edges that drop directly into slime, you are immediately eliminated. Not only that, but the level of slime gradually rises as the event progresses, so if you fall down a couple of times, you're in danger of being caught. So this is tricky, but it's also one of the best events if you get good because so many people get eliminated. From the start, you can jump on these yellow barriers after the first corner to reach the next level up, but in a crowd this can be risky, especially with timing the moving platforms on top. The furthest one is a little safer than the nearest. Go steady for the row of shoving walls, like Obi-Wan in The Phantom Menace, just take one at a time. Round the corner there's a hill of rolling balls. Stick to the inside unless there are balls in the way and head for this gap. There's a shortcut here, you can jump up to the first moving wall. Take these walls steady too and then cut the next corner up to the conveyor belt level. You'll end up close to the left hand edge the whole way up but that's okay, just angle your run inwards and you'll be safe. On the big beams that come next, try to land dead centre and then compensate for the direction your bean starts to slip. Just a little though or you'll overbalance. Then there's a hill of slime and revolving mallets. Run diagonally up here, bottom left to top right, and you can skip the corner here too. Be very careful of the next set of moving walls. They're trickier than the last. And then just go slowly and surely through the slime to the finish. Now we're moving on to Fall Guys' various survival rounds, where the trick isn't to be first, it's just to stay alive. Starting with Rollout, which is about keeping on top of a rolling set of circular platforms. The best plan here is to frequently turn your camera sideways so you can see where you are height-wise on the cylinder. When it moves quickly, you can start to slide off without realizing. Stay in the middle of the cylinder if you can, so you always have two different options about where to move next, but also look for big, flat sections of rolling platform to find safety on. <laughs> Block Party is a little similar to Rollout in that nothing is more important than positioning and good reactions. Stay near the front of the platform so you have time to recover if you slip over in the crowd. And be careful of the jumping sections. In a crowd you can be swept off your feet. Try to give yourself as much space as possible. <laughs> Next, we have Jump Club. Here, two bars rotate at different speeds around a circular platform. Follow the pink bar as closely as you can and just be aware that if you jump at the wrong time, this one can knock you over. But the real danger is the green bar that will be sweeping up behind you to knock you off your feet. Follow the pink bar and keep an eye behind you for the green one, dropping back a little and hopping over it every time it comes round. The only real danger is hitting both bars at once or losing focus and getting swept off your feet. 
Something a little different is Perfect Match, a memory game where you need to remember which fruit is on which tile and then head to the one that corresponds to the fruit shown on the big screen. It helps to hang at the back to get the clearest possible view of all the tiles as well as being able to see the screen itself. As the number of things you need to remember increases, it's also worth saying the fruit names out loud in the order of which they are around you. Melon, grapes, apple, banana. Melon, grapes, apple, banana. Melon, next. <laughs> next is Tail Tag, a frantic and brutal way to eliminate swathes of players. The aim is to end the round with a tail. You can grab one from players with tails using R2 when you're close. What's the secret here? There's no real safe space. There are too many players. The very center can be useful. The rotating mallet keeps away would-be grabbers and you get a good view of them coming. It also helps to hang around with other players who already have tails. They don't see you as a threat, but for you, they're insurance. All you need to be is faster than the players around you. Most of all, don't panic. Don't chase people. You can't outpace them. Cut them off and anticipate where they're going. Keep calm and even down to the very last second, you can snatch a tail to make it through. Now it's on to team rounds. These can be tricky because sadly, there's no accounting for the performance of your teammates. Although you do improve your odds by playing with friends. As far as we can see, you're always put on the same team as people in your party. Carrying on from where we just were, we have team tail tag, which is the same as tail tag, except your whole team's score is important. The advice here is the same as before, stay aware and keep moving, but you can also help teammates. Try grabbing pursuers to defend teammates with tails or grab opponents with tails to help teammates snatch them. And yes, you can take tails off your team, but we shouldn't need to tell you this does not help your goals. Honestly. <laughs> Jinxed meanwhile is a bit like tail tag in reverse. One person on each team is infected and has to infect the other team. The first team to be fully infected loses. The only advice here is avoiding getting infected is obviously crucial. You can't lose if you're not infected. But also, as soon as you are infected, you can infect people on the other team. And that's the only way you can actually win. Next, we have Egg Scramble, which can be an awful mess. Playing catch up in this game is the most difficult thing, so concentrate on filling your basket right at the start of the game. Ignore the other teams and make quick dashes to the center to grab an egg. Run between the mallets by your basket and let go to throw it in. You should be able to get three or four. Yes, aim for the golden egg if you can, it is worth more, but more than anything, just grab some eggs. And then it's about defending. Stand at the top of the stairs by your basket and block the entrance. Getting up is hard enough for opponents without bodies in the way. With three or four of your team here, it's almost impossible to lose eggs. If one does slip past, grab them for the full duration of a grab, i.e. hold R2 and don't let go and they'll spill the egg. Defending is so much easier than trying to steal. Let the other team scrap it out. And if you find yourself playing catch up, then best of luck. Next is Hoopsie Daisy, where three teams battle it out to leap through more point scoring hoops than the others. The hoops hit the same few spots over and over, but you can't really predict where they'll be. So just try to find space, keep moving, and remember that gold hoops are worth more and are worth dashing for. It's also important to use dive. Diving with square gives you a little horizontal motion even in mid-air, which is a great way of hitting hard to get hoops and beating others to the punch. Our next event is Fall Ball, which is so much fun and can be so punishing. This is football with two balls and is about shoving the ball up the pitch into the other team's goal. Things to note, positioning is key because you always want to hit the ball up the field, not towards your own goal. This is a game won by attrition. Make sure you're on the right side of the ball and if you're not, don't touch it. Chasing the ball back to your own goal can be very bad. Let a teammate coming the other way deal with it. Relatedly, your team needs a keeper, someone at the back picking up anything that breaks through. If there isn't one, then it's you. Get back there and clear anything that comes near the goal. If the keeper position is covered, then concentrate on stepping back a little from the melee and timing your interventions as the ball breaks. This can be very effective. 
Restarts are where the game can be won and lost though. It's the best time to get the biggest, cleanest hit on the ball to send it towards your opponent's goal. As soon as you see this shadow of the ball appear, get underneath it and jump. It's like a basketball tip-off. If you win the ball, you can even score straight from the start. And lastly, good to know for getting back to the centre if you've just conceded or scored, jumping into either goal teleports you back to the centre circle. Rock and roll is another big ball game. This time the aim is to shove your ball to the end of the course as quickly as possible. The key thing, just push the ball. Some people try to be clever and race ahead to interfere with the other teams. They almost always lose because power behind the ball is the most important thing. If you desperately need to feel special, the only thing worth doing is rushing ahead here. Everyone's ball always gets stuck at this set of pillars. You can run ahead, stand next to it and stop this little jam from happening. Once your ball is on the final slope, just keep pushing. Ignore the other teams, even if they try to disrupt you. Nothing is more effective than just shoving your ball down the hill. They will lose. Hoarders is the third big ball game, but here there's a territorial element. The idea is for your team to grab and keep as many balls as possible in your portion of the map. The tricky thing here, which we just mentioned, is that it's only really possible to hit the ball forward. So grabbing the balls in the first place means leaving your area, preferably with a teammate or two, to run around a ball to bounce it back in the direction of home. This can leave your existing balls undefended. You'll have to decide whether you're better used stealing or defending. Try to identify easy wins loose balls without many players nearby. Avoid getting into sticky wrestling matches where you can. Once you have a lead, defend it by facing your own area, scanning left and right to see where a ball might be escaping and swooping in as necessary. The balls in hoarders feel a little lighter than in full ball, hitting them at opponents can sometimes bounce them out of your area doing their job for them, so intervene nice and early and disrupt their plans at the source. So when you've beaten enough of those rounds to make it to the final, it's going to be one of these. It could be Full Mountain, which is basically like an ultimate version of the other race events in the game. The big danger on the ascent here are the balls that cascade down the hill. The sides are a little safer, but maybe not the most direct route. Keep an eye on the balls to see which side of the various obstacles they fall. These spinning doors can give you a boost if they hit you when you're already through, though falling over can be costly. This though is the most crucial part of the event, the mallets. Always go with the motion of the mallet itself and try to time it so you can slip through. Finally, when you're at the top, resist the temptation to jump too soon for the crown. It moves up and down and if you go too early, you could miss it. There's also the only new event added since launch, Jump Showdown. This is a winner-takes-all version of Jump Club. Look, you can tell it's fancy because the revolving beams are golden and it's got some added difficulties. The first is that the beams move quicker, so things get tricky fast. You'll also notice that both the low and high beams are now double-sided, so where jumping the single green beam earlier was relatively easy, now timing is much more hazardous. Not as hazardous, though, as the third change, disappearing platforms. Random segments of the circle will shake for a few seconds to signal their imminent departure at which point you need to move. While dodging the beams and avoiding entanglements with other players and making sure you don't get marooned on a doomed platform. For all that though, the trick is still the same as before. Making sure you're not dealing with both beams at once because if you're jumping the low one when the big one sweeps round, it's over. The final could also be Hexagon, a devilish game of disappearing platforms. The key here is to stay calm and play your own game. Don't run. Each platform gives you a short time of staying alive. Maximize each one by jumping from one to the next before they disappear. Running is like speed eating. You need to ration yourself. If you're running out of hexagons, look at where you're going to fall. If you can, aim for a nice big patch of fresh tiles on the level below. While it's important to play your own game, sometimes someone will come too close to you and then it's worth isolating yourself or trying to cut them off by taking out certain tiles. Most importantly though, keep cool and stick to what you're doing. Outlast your enemies. Lastly, we have Royal Fumble, which is like a winner-takes-all version of Tail Tag with just one tail. The chances are you won't start with the tail, so try to cut others off rather than chase them. 
everyone runs at the same speed, so get ahead of the game. When you do get the tail, be aware of others in front of you. Head up ramps to the middle. The swinging balls and rotating disc will often take care of pursuers and jumping off the disc yourself will give you a bit of speed and distance. Lastly, be aware of who's around when you make a successful grab at the tail. Other opponents can snatch it off you right away, even when the clock says zero and you know you should definitely have already won the game. Look, that's your guide to every minigame event that currently features in Fall Guys, although we're sure they'll be adding more in the weeks to come. Let us know your tips in the comments, tell us if you've managed to win a crown so far, like this video if you enjoyed it, and don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date with everything from the world of PlayStation. For the players.